So we're looking now at some arteries of the forearm. If we come to the proximal forearm here, where we're on an anterior view of a right forearm model, here we've got a brachial artery. Now the brachial artery splits here into radial and ulnar arteries. Now the radial and ulnar arteries carry on down the forearm, distally. And what we need to have a closer look at though, and it's pretty cool on this model, is we need to zoom in. We're going to have a really close look at what happens with the ulnar artery here. So here's our brachial, here's our ulnar artery. The ulnar artery, once it comes deep to flexor digitorum superficialis here, actually gives off a, a branch. Now that branch, this little vessel here, is the common interosseous artery. Now there's not much of it there to see. It's got number 60 written on it. <coughs> but that's the common interosseous artery. Now it fairly promptly splits into an anterior interosseous artery, which remains anterior, and then a posterior interosseous artery, which you can just see here, that's going to go through the interosseous membrane and become posterior. So those ones we can clearly see on this model. I don't think we have a specimen that has them visible, but so, so make sure that you do know them uh, and can identify them on this model. Okay. Now let's zoom out a bit and we'll just we don't actually have the veins present on this model, but we can have a look at where they are, or where they would be if they were present. So let's come back to looking at our radial and ulnar arteries. Now the radial veins, if they're present on a specimen, will just be either side of the radial artery and they're very small. Usually there are two, just one either side of the artery. Same situation with the ulnar veins, there's usually just one either side of the ulnar artery and they're much, much smaller in diameter than the artery. So they can be hard to spot even if they're present and they can be, they, they may have been removed if, you know, on the specimen that you're looking at. So that's the, the deeper veins. Now then we have some more superficial veins. Now firstly, on the lateral aspect, running along the lateral aspect of the forearm, we find the cephalic vein. So it'll be running along here and it's superficial. So it's just under the skin. On some individuals you can see it as a surface anatomy structure, but not always. And then on the medial side, so where flexor carpi ulnaris is found, we would have a basilic vein. And again, some people, you can see it quite clearly. So that would be the basilic vein. Now joining those in the cubital fossa, so running from the cephalic across to the basilic, is the median cubital vein. So it would be sitting across here. Now don't forget that the cephalic vein carries on up the lateral aspect of the arm and the basilic vein carries on up the medial aspect of the arm. They don't end here at the cubital fossa, they carry on and the median cubital vein just communicates between the two. 